and then you're all set. Okay, terrific. So as I said, we're a small group now. Um, I, I do believe that we'll have um, a few others uh, joining us, but I am delighted that um, you are all here now and um, interested and ready to learn um, and to explore really more of the uh, Sidor Lev Shalem. Do any of you have your own copies of it by any chance? Um, or you don't have like a, a personal copy yet? Francis, you have one? I know, I, but I have a question that I probably should be embarrassed to ask, but I've gone Not at all. Age of embarrassment, right? It, uh, what Not does, at all. Um, is what what has happened? This is not the relatively new Sidur that we were using for for the daily minion, the morning minion. Ah, okay. okay. So um, and no. or and or is this the same translation as the Matsor that we used for the high holidays in Rabbi Helene's service? Okay, that is an excellent question. Um, and you know, it's um, I don't want anyone to be confused, so I'm actually glad that you asked because you're right in the past you know like just several years we've had a lot of new um prayer books um coming our way so um let's be you know we'll i'll try to make it clear um what we're using and, and what book is what um and i also know uh jim you said you're at um summit jcc yes so you also have had a new prayer book in the last several years as well right but Correct. a different one but a different yes it's a different one Yes. And okay, we but, did we did look at this at the one you're using. That was okay. one of our two. Yeah. So it might be interesting to hear your your input, um, you know, as, as to um, why you know you went in one direction or the other. But in any case, we'll we'll get that to that later. But to Francis's question, so um, we were using. Let me just grab this see door right here. We had been using an old version of a weekday see door. Um, and that Sidor was really um, outdated and our physical books were not in great condition. So we ordered this book, which is the weekday companion uh, or part of the set of the Sidor Sim Shalom. The Sidor Sim Shalom is the current Sidor that we use on Shabbat and holidays in our uh, congregation at CBI. So this is the, the Sidor, the Sidor Sim Shalom that we have been using now for um, a good, uh, probably 15 years or so. And um, when I first came, we were using the Silverman. And then after several years, I don't remember exactly how many years, but after several years, we switched to the Sidor Sim Shalom. But then we never switched. And the Sidor Sim Shalom only has Shabbat and, and holidays. It doesn't have, um, it's not, really um, conducive to weekday morning because it doesn't have many things, including the, the Torah readings for it every more for Monday, Thursday morning and Rosh Chodesh, etc. So then we decided that um, we would switch over and get the new volume of the Sidor Sim Shalom, but the weekday version. So that's the one that we have. And we will continue to use this one because for now, we're only using, we're only going to be transitioning to the Lev Shalem Sidor just for Shabbat. Again, this, this Sidor is not set up for use, for use on weekdays. It doesn't have the weekday Torah reading and many other things that we would need for weekday mornings. Um, for evenings, you, you could get away with it, but we're going to stick to the, the weekday prayer book, the new book that we had been using. But this session and what we're going to explore is not exploring the weekday, it's going to explore the new Shabbat Sidur. And the follow-up um, question that you asked about the Machzor that um, some of the congregation uses for the service that, um, like what we call the parallel service or the um, added service um, that Rabbi Helene had been leading for the high holidays, that Machzor is called Machzor Lev Shalem. And that is indeed part of this series of the Lev Shalem prayer books. And the Mahsor came first. 
So they, uh, the rabbinical assembly um, published this machsor before they finished um, working on editing the Sidur. Um, so we, um, our congregation purchased enough copies of that machsor to use for that service. But I imagine that we're going to be going in that direction um, for the entire congregation um, to use the machsor um, of uh, Lev Shalem for everyone. So um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I hope that that clarified um, your um, question. Did anybody else have a question about this um, sidur or? Um, okay, so um, I want to um, first. I think most of you were here at the last session, or maybe not everybody. Um, but in any case, um, if if somebody missed any part or all of the last session. You won't be lost in this one. We're um, we're going to do um, you know we're actually going to jump into the Sidor momentarily. Um, let me just see that I can screen share here. Okay, so let me go share, and we go. Um, It's this one. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to first start um, with a um, a quote, a saying from the Mishnah, uh, Mishnah from Brachot, um, chapter four, uh, verse four, of Rabbi Eliezer. And this is from uh, my Jewish learning. Um, that's where I uh, found the quote because it's a sort of an article on um, how we choose a sidur uh, about the sidur. But here's the quote: Rabbi Eliezer said. One who makes one's prayers fixed, that person's prayers are not sincere petitions. So once again, Rabbi Eliezer said, one who makes one's prayers fixed, that person's prayers are not sincere petitions. So I just want you to sort of keep that in mind. We could maybe um, take a moment or two to um, react to that um, particular quote, that if you make your prayers fixed, your prayers are not sincere. So just as a, what does that mean to you? And what is that when you think about that quote, um, or if you agree with it or not, how does that um, change your, or how does that affect your relationship to a Sidur? And by the way, um, everyone, um, whether we think about it or not, we do develop indeed a relationship with the prayer book that we use. Um, we, you know, if, depending upon how much you use it, you come to know it um, inside and out, um, which is, you know, um, you know, for many people, like just the whole idea of changing to a new Sidor because it's something that we're already so familiar with, knowing all the pages, where to find, uh, just the comfort of it in your hand, you know, how you hold it um, because of its size, you just, you get used to it. So um, just for a moment to react to this quote about um, if your prayers are fixed, they're not sincere. Any um, comments? Just feel free to unmute. Rabbi Julie. So interestingly, one of the things I found is that in knowing the prayers so well that it becomes not rote, but comfortable and routine, it frees me to actually get to a more spiritual place because I like, the Amidah particularly, right? Once I'm so comfortable with it that I can just read through it and sing through it, um, it frees me up to engage with it more in a deeper way. So, so um, thank you. That's beautiful and um, you know a, a special way to uh, to think about um, something that you're so familiar with that it. Um, and I think you can you know make analogies to other. Uh, parts of areas of our lives when we're so comfortable with something that it actually allows us to um, to connect with it even more like that that totally makes sense but and so um, does anybody have like the other um, viewpoint of you know that if um, you know just like people say to me all the time um, you know how do you say the same prayers every day week and week out daily you know and not get tired or bored of them so maybe you, one of you has that question or maybe somebody's been asked that, but, or you've thought about it 
So any reactions to that, you know, possibly different than um, how Rabbi Julie expressed it? So first of all, what are, what are some of the things that make that, even though we're saying the same words, what are some of the things that makes um, the prayers possibly in a way different um, each day or, or Shabbat or at different times? What's one of the obvious things, Susan? I well, think saying let, the prayers rotely goes, it just, you just zoom through it without thinking. And I'm not always thinking of God and holiness and spirituality when I'm zooming through those words. And um, the music makes all the difference in terms of differentiating the prayers. Yes. Totally. Okay. So as, as you said, Lily, and maybe Susan, you were going to say the same thing or something different you want to add? No, I, I was going to say we're different every day. Ah, so, I love that. Okay. So I think there, there's some days that um, if we're, you know, if we're just not all that into it, we, we tend to just do it by rote. Um, but if something is, is going on in our lives, um, you know, there's certainly times that, you know, just saying Shema Tefillah, um, you know, we're, we're praying for something, whether it's, you know, our health and everybody else's health, that, that different prayers are going to have meaning that you're going to say them um, with more emphasis. And then there are days that, you know, you've had a long night, whatever, and you come to morning minion and you can barely open your eyes. And it's just like, okay, let me just get through this. And, you know, those are the days that we really need to, you know, find a new way to. Uh, uh, Absolutely. So um, part of it, as, um, as you said, is the, um, well, first we like the, the music um, is a way that we could you know, make it different. Mm -hmm. And as Susan beautifully also said, that making our thinking about how we are different um, when we are coming to prayer, different experiences that are happening um, in our lives is personally, um, and it's a very private um, part of it. And also um, the, you know, you said sometimes just like Lily said by rote or just going through it, the mitzvah is really just to say um, the, the prayer says, you know, say them a certain number of times a day. I don't think you get any special brownie points for um, feeling it like it doesn't really, you know, a tradition doesn't talk about, um, you know, that you have to um, have a spiritual connection. I mean, that's, you know, ultimately the, the goal, um, but you, you, the idea is the mitzvah is just to, to say um, these prayers and to say them the correct or the appropriate number of times um, per day. Um, and for wherever the occasion is. So that brings us to our Sidor and how it could help us, um, first of all, um, approach, have the approach that, um, for, that Rabbi Julie is lucky enough to have um, with becoming so familiar with the text that it actually helps to make it, to, to bring out more of that um, spiritual connection to, to the liturgy, to the words and um, to the experiences, the feelings that go along with it. Um, and one of the ways that um, we become familiar with something is to learn, to know more about it. So I think, you know, if I sort of had to sum up, like, what is um, ultimately the beauty and the, um, the um, you know, the, the, the real benefit um, of moving to this Sidor is that hopefully it's going to help all of us learn even more about the tefillot, about the liturgy, as we're, um, either as we're davening, or if you have your own copy, or if at another time you're sitting and just reading through the Siddur, you will learn more because there is so much in here, and that's why it's so big, um, there's so much commentary and um, history and there's contemporary, um, so we talked about this, this format of the page, that it's like four columns. So I want to take us back to the Sidor. Let me screen share and go to the Kabbalah Shabbat. Okay, so we're going to jump into the Sidor, and this is a journey that we're taking together. So one of the things that I want you to keep in mind as we're um, discussing, we're, and today we're going to focus um, on the Friday evening service. I don't want anyone to, you know, walk away thinking, oh no, we're going to, you know, switch the door, and now 
um, you know, our Shabbat morning service used to be three hours. Now Kabbalat Shabbat is going to become three, four hours as we sit in every page, look at, you know, every single, um, you know, read every historical thing. Or the, so that's not the idea at all. The idea, again, is to take the service that we have and just enhance it by, um, but, but not each time doing everything um, that's there. So either um, whoever is leading the Sidor might um, infuse some of the new um, aspects of the Sidor, or you yourself, as, you're, um, as we're davening, you don't always have to be saying the same uh, words and the same prayers as everybody else. If you um, find a reading or an alternate to a prayer and want to say it or read it as everybody else is reading something else, there are no rules like that. Like you're um, more than welcome and in fact, you're encouraged. Um, to do that with the use of the Sidor. So um, I, I think what we saw from last time, it, I, I don't think that I can make the page that much bigger without um, people um, being able to see a lot of, like if there's something that we need to read, I will make it bigger, but um, I'm going to actually use the, the hard copy of the Sidor because it's hard for me to um, read it um, on the screen. Um, but I, I will show you and explain um, different things that we're looking at. So, uh, and also I should mention that I have never davened from the Sidor. This is new for me as well and exciting, um, but it's definitely new. And um, I'm excited about the possibilities that this Sidor um, will present for us for, as a congregation and for me personally. So speaking about personally, I think one of the um, things that the editors wanted the Sidor to be is for communal use, obviously, but also for personal use, very much so. And as I said, for each of us to have our relationship with the Sidor um, and to um, have it be something that we use not only in the synagogue, but to have our own copies and to use it at home. Now, how do we know that? Um, the very first thing that's in the Sidor after a few pages of um, forward and introduction, um, is what we call Hachana Shabbat. There are several pages of preparation for Shabbat. Now, you would not really need this in the synagogue because we're not doing, the, at least in our congregation, maybe some conservative synagogues do, but we're not lighting uh, Shabbat candles as part of um, starting off our service. Um, and the other pieces of the and by the way, in this um, online version, um, they don't give you um, th that home preparation. So you see it starts um, really on page 10 um, and you don't get this, the first several pages. So it starts with the introductory introductory song, Welcoming Shabbat, which is really um, the poem, Yedid Nefesh. So um, let me just tell you though, what is um, in the hachana, the preparation um, piece of it for Shabbat. Um, and that is, um, there are two pages devoted to candle lighting. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, why two pages? It's one, you know, very short blessing. That's, the, that's what we have for lighting candles. So in the Sidor, um, there are included actually two pages of um, meditations or readings that you um, could do as part of your, uh, as part of lighting the candles. Um, and there are choices um, for these kavanot, these meditations, either before or after the reading, um, and people are welcome to do that. Now, um, so that's the, the beginning part, the hachana. And then we go to, and again, this is not here, there are two pages, full pages of um, about the Kabbalat Shabbat service, welcoming Shabbat, um, and some background. So again, you, you might not want to read this all the time, but if at some point you're thinking, oh, I, I'd like to learn a little bit more about the background of Kabbalat Shabbat, well, you just go right to your Sidor and you can read it. Um, so let me just read this part where it says, in this Sidor, Kabbalat Shabbat is distinctively organized along historical lines. And that means the, um, how the service was put together. Preceding the six Psalms that introduce the Chadodi are the first two chapters of the Song of Songs, 
Shir Hashirim, um, and the mystical poem, which um, you, you see is uh, included in the online version, Yedid Nefesh, honoring Shabbat and describing the quest for a relationship with God. So here's something very interesting. This was not included, um, the, the Shir Hashirim, the love poetry, the, the um, Song of Songs, in our Sidur as part of an introduction to Shabbat. In the Sidur Sim Shalom, and um, I believe even the Silverman, there were excerpts from Shir Hashirim, but they were only found in the Sidur, sort of towards the back, because they were there to um, fulfill the, um, you know, people, uh, many congregations, and, and we do also read Shir Hashirim, either all or part of it, um, on the Shabbat in between Pesach. Shabbat Chol Hamoed Pesach is traditionally when the, the different Megillot are read on um, festivals, and for Pesach, that festival, the Megillah or the scroll or the book that's read is um, Shir Hashirim. So now we have it included because this is um, the custom of some people um, to say, not all, but parts of Shir Hashirim um, at the beginning of um, the, uh, as we welcome Shabbat. So um, that would be on the next few pages, the pages that you don't have in this online version. Um, you have uh, several, let's see, they start with chapters one and two, and that's on pages seven and eight and nine. Okay, so that's what's um, sort of missing before we start um, with the, what, what's here for the Kabbalah Shabbat service. So now I've brought you up to date. Um, we were in this uh, online version, and the first thing is Yedid Nefesh. Um, so this is a very beautiful um, poem um, written in the uh, 16th century, um, and uh, many congregations sing it. So what I want to show you is that there is commentary. Um, wait a second, that's on the other side. Can you see the commentary? And I have to get rid of this box there. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so um, commentary and some explanation. Um, and very often you'll see, um, like here are some of the words, um, av harachamim, like they're um, av harachaman, they're, there's explanation um, of these, uh, what the words mean. Um, and on the other side of, and oh, over here on this side of the page, um, okay, so you have the Hebrew that's over here, and it's, it's a very nice uh, font. I think it's very easy to read. Um, the letters are, um, you know, I think it, the, the, they're just um, very straightforward. I, I, I think it's uh, comfortable to read this. What just happened here? Okay, and then on this side of the page, you have the English, and um, we'll talk a little bit about translation. Um, translation, as you can guess, is also a form of commentary. Um, and one of the things about the translation in this Sidur, and it was true um, for the most part in Sidur Sim Shalom, uh, that the, the language, um, they tried to, the editors tried to make it as gender neutral as, pos as possible of course, with Hebrew being a gender specific language. So you have words that are either considered masculine or feminine in their form. So, but with translations, they really tried to make the, the translations more gender neutral. And then if there's something that the editors felt that people would be singing together, one of the beauties of Lev Shalem is that it has much more transliteration than the Sidor Sim Shalom had. Sidor Sim Shalom had a little bit, but really not enough. If people were not comfortable reading the Hebrew or reading it at the pace that, you know, whatever, um, but making it really accessible for people to sing along, um, to read along by transliterating a lot of the passages. So you'll see the transliteration um, that's usually on the left side of the page um, and it's in red. 
So hopefully that will be more helpful. Okay, now we go to the Psalms. And uh, what I want to show you about the Psalms, so there are six um, Psalms that precede the Chagodi, and they are numbered by um, a, a Hebrew letter. So the Hebrew letters are, have the equivalent of um, numbers. Um, so Aleph, this is the first Psalm, but it's actually Psalm 95. Um, and we're talking about um, translation, so I want you to look a little bit here. Um, so, let us go and sing unto God. And then um, there's the words, so it's transliterated uh, over here on this side, if you are following along. And in the English, let us go and sing to Adonai, let us trumpet praise to our protector. So this is an uh, interesting um, translation, um, but I think that they want you, the editors want you to have more of an understanding of the, of a, um, the origin, let's say, of, of a word. So the word that they're focusing on here is this word naria, um, and I'll just read the explanation. The root of the Hebrew word is the same as that describing the call of the shofar, like teruah, like teruah. Um, our voices when raised in praise become the trumpets announcing God's arrival. So again, does that change, you know, how you feel about this Psalm? I probably not, I don't know. Um, maybe, you know, if you thought about it a little bit, but, um, you know, I, I think that the, it, it's a beautiful thing that the, the editors of the Sidur are really trying to help us um, connect with certain key words or um, themes um, or elements in each of the, uh, in, on every page of the Sidur, there's something that we can find to help us connect um, to even just a small piece of it. Um, then the other interesting translation to me um, after Naria is Litzur. And usually we know the word Tzur um, means rock like Tzur Yisrael, and that's always trans translated as rock of Israel. Um, but in this case, um, they're giving us another way to look at it. And you can see that, uh, I'll just scroll up a little bit here, um, in this paragraph right here. Um, and it says, Tzur, Litzur, literally rock, and sometimes translated that way. But in many places in the Bible, God is called by this name. Protecting fortresses and city walls were built on rocky high places. Thus, in addition to suggesting solidity and reliability, the metaphor implies protection and security. The following word, yishenu, comes from a root that can denote a victory, successful defense or rescue. Here, the likely reference is to the secure defense that God provides. So again, um, many of the themes of the Psalms of Kabbalah Shabbat is God as Melech, Adonai Malach. Um, and that is not translated as God as King. It, it usually is God as Sovereign. Um, but also to sort of extend that theme and think of God as Protector. And I think that that is why this word um, Tzur, Litzur, was um, translated um, as we saw here, as um, our protector rather than as our rock. Um, so just to stop sharing for a moment, any like reactions to this? Does, you know, if you're um, davening and we're singing, or, wherever, or the other tune, or whatever tune we're singing, um, how, like, is this something that you could see yourself um, reading along and being inspired? Is it um, something that is distracted? Like, you know, talk to me a little bit about um, sort of your reaction to, you know, now that we've looked at this first page. I love it. I love the explanations. I love knowing what the words really mean. And not only the translation of the word, but why it is Tzur, how, how the background of it, because the Sidur just gives the straight translation, which is oftentimes annoying and meaningless. And this really gives it some depth. Beautiful. 
Okay, and so I, that, and I, that is the whole point, right? So great. Um, so again, when you're, um, I, I, I want to emphasize this, and I, I'm sure you know, but just to say it that you're there's no um, that it's there for you, but it doesn't mean that you have to take that step or or that um, sidebar, you know, whatever to read this, if you want to just sing the psalm and enjoy the moment, the melody, you know, whatever it is, you don't have to, you know, read the other, or you don't have to read it at the time of that you're praying it. If you have the Siddur, if you have access to it, you could read it at a different time and, you know, and then sort of learn that and absorb it. And then as you're singing it, um, you can think about the things that you've learned about it. But also if you're, hearing the melody and you decide, you know what, this melody is inspiring me or, or I'm not inspired by that, you know, maybe I'll just read and try to learn something like it, it's there for you. So that's the beauty of having a Sidor like this. Um, in terms of translation, one other thing that I do want to point out because this Sidor really went to a lot of trouble um, to um, really keep the language very gender neutral. So there, is, there are words, and it appears several times um, in Psalm 95, um, the words like bismirot uh, nariya lo. So the word is lo right here. Um, and, and then it appears again, betoafo tarim lo, asher lo hayam. So those, the, the word actually is to him, and it, would, it means to God. But rather than translating it to him, which um, previous Sidurim um, did translate it that way, um, but we're trying now not to, you see that the editors are trying to not use any um, gender language like that, any spe specifically male, you know, um, that because so many of those words that are associated with God are because of the Hebrew, they are um, the masculine form. So rather than doing that, um, the, the translation um, becomes like where it would say bismirot uh, narialo. Um, so there is it. Okay, so filled with thanks, let us greet God raising our voice in song. So it's not really saying to, to him, but I think it's implied um, in the translation here. So it's not a literal translation, but definitely the meaning of the text from the Hebrew um, is certainly um, implied here. Okay, so now we go. Moving. Uh, I have oh, a comment. Oh, oh yes, Sherlan. Yeah, yeah. I just had the, uh, the Sim Shalom uh, in front of me. They also do not use gendered language or try not to. There's no him uh, at all in Sim Shalom's translation of Psalm 95 either. So that that consciousness has been with us at least for 20, 20 years or 30 yes. years to try to do away with that. Yeah, absolutely. But there are um, some places in the um, Sidor Sim Shalom where they didn't do that. So not in this particular Psalm, but um, you definitely can find examples in the Sidor Sim Shalom where it does say um, to him with a capital H. So this Sidor really did away with all of it. Um, and I'm gonna show you a few other um, examples of other ways, not just the to him, but some other things um, that we'll see in a, in a little bit. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to show you um, was that for all of the Kabbalah Shabbat Psalms, none of them are complete on one page. It's just an interesting um, approach to, um, to the design, the layout of the Sidur. Um, and, you know, one could argue, okay, well, maybe it's to not, you know, crowd up the page, but um, some of the pages are pretty crowded, but some of the pages have a lot of empty space on them. Um, but I think that part of the idea is, um, to allow for whoever is leading the service, at least this is what I actually heard from um, some of the editors, um, to allow for doing only excerpts of, um, of the service 
and not have people think like, oh, look at that, there's a whole sum and we're, you know, we're only doing part like, um, that it just sort of looks better on the page if you're saying just part of it, um, that that's the only part that you actually see on the page. So, um, and again, here is some of the transliteration because this is something um, that the editors felt that you know most people would sing, so the transliteration is included there. Okay, now moving along, um, I also want to show you that remember we we mentioned that um, Shir Hashirim, part of um, the Song of Songs is included at the beginning of the Kabbalat Shabbat service before um, we get to the first Psalm. But for each of the Kabbalat Shabbat service Psalms, on the left side of the page, you know, this is the part, not the, um, you know, historical um, or the, the commentary about um, specific words or phrases or concepts, but on the left side, um, which is more the side that has um, either contemporary or corresponding text or something that you could read alternatively instead of um, if you don't want to read the psalm that's there. Um, like for example, um, for this Psalm 95, there's um, a poem here, I Found Myself Yearning. Um, and that is a poem by Miriam Baruch Halfi. And by the way, I don't know who Miriam Baruch Halfi is, but in the back of the Sidur, um, which also um, I don't have, it, it's not on the, um, the online version, but in the very back of the Sidur, there is a huge glossary of Hebrew and liturgical terms, which I fully encourage you to, to go look at when you are, um, when you have a copy of the Sidur in front of you. There is a glossary of rabbinic texts. So in other words, a, an explanation of uh, let's say, um, just picking a random one here, um, the numbers raba. okay? Just, uh, this is random. So I'm reading now what it says, and there's an explanation. Numbers raba, a midrashic commentary on the book of numbers. It was probably compiled in the 12th century and is largely based on material found in earlier midrashic collections, and so on and so on. So all of the rabbinic texts, um, and you'll see that they are included um, on various parts of the page. So this way, if you see that some, that a rabbinic text is mentioned and you want to know, oh, what, you know, where is this from or um, what time period, whatever it is, just go look at the glossary in the back. Okay, then there's also a glossary of historical figures. Again, this is um, just amazing to have all together in one place so that you can reference it when you're reading something and seeing it and see where it's from. So again, I uh, will just uh, take any random one here. Um, there is a, uh, okay, let's go for Jacob Emden. Okay, Jacob Emden lived from 1697 to 1776. He was a rabbinic authority from Hamburg, Germany, edited an influential edition of the Sidor with a commentary called Sidor Beit Yaakov. So, if you were reading something and it was something that's included that Jacob Emden um, may have written, at least you know who he is and you can put it in context and you have um, his dates and time period. Okay, so there's several pages of that. Um, so now we can uh, also find um, Miriam Baruch Hafi. Um, and let's see. All right, well, I'm not finding it now, but in any case, um, maybe it's listed on something else. So, um, but you get the idea that you, you can go to the back of the book. And as I said, I encourage you to continue to look at the back and see what's there because it's full of information um, that uh, could help you. So now back to our left side of the page. So sometimes we're going to have for each one of these Kabbalah Shabbat Psalms, Sometimes we're going to have excerpts from Shir Hashirim. And again, they, they are placed there because in some way they're thematically connected. And the way you would know that is by looking at the right side of the page. So for example, here, 
um, it says that the, the excerpt that they've chosen here from Song of Songs, in this case, expresses both love and desire on the part of the lover and also her distance from her beloved, the difficulty in finding him. Similarly, Psalm 95 declares the love of God, yet describes the way in which the people Israel distance themselves from God's will and desire. Underneath the awareness of distance is the expression of deep yearning. So very thematically connected um, to this section um, of, of Song of Songs that's included. So either we could do it instead sometime of Psalm 95 or as Psalm 95 is being read, you may want to you know, read the, the Song of Songs, this excerpt from Song of Songs, or we could do it in addition. Um, and it's just nice to have um, that option there. Okay, so if song, if an excerpt from Song of Songs is not included on the left side of the page, instead, there might be something like this, which are different kavanot, um, different quotes. Um, in this case, um, for this next Psalm, um, for 96, there are quotes um, that are, um, some of them um, Hasidic, um, and they give us another way, what kavanot uh, means intentions, another way to delve deeper into the meaning of the text. So as we're singing or as you're reading or praying, um, you could look at those kavanot. Um, and uh, you know, I, I do really think that um, it can really help to elevate um, and to give a deeper understanding of the prayer. Um, now we go to, let's see, I don't want to scroll a little bit. Okay, so we're going through the Psalms, and as I said, there um, each Psalm is divided into uh, at least two pages. So um, Gimel, that's already the third Psalm, and we keep going. We keep going. Okay. Um, So I'm just scrolling through the pages. More of the Psalms. Okay, now this particular Psalm, Psalm 29, um, is the, the Psalm where the theme of it is the voice of Adonai. Um, and I love the fact that, um, and that word is, um, the, the word kol um, is repeated seven times in this Psalm. And I love the fact that on the, this left side of the page, um, they give more of an explanation um, and uh, again, kavanot um, to focus on each, each time that the word call is used. So that will be also a nice thing to look at. This psalm is transliterated the entire thing. Um, in most congregations will sing it all on um, Friday night or even Shabbat morning. Um, and it's, uh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So then we come to the Chadodi. There is commentary, of course, a little background um, about who wrote it. Um, some of, and then for some of the verses, you'll find um, commentary here on the right side of the page. All of it transliterated, not just uh, the refrain, as was in Sidur Sim Shalom, um, because it, it, it's a given that people are going to sing the Chadodi, um, so all of it can be sung together. Um, okay, now we get to, um, here's an interesting page. So if you look at Sidur Sim Shalom, um, after the Chadodi, there's a little, um, just a, a little section um, at, at the bottom of the page that says um, comforting the mourners. Um, in, in Lev Shalem, this is given a full um, page, like when I say full page, the right side and the left side um, devoted to this concept of um, comforting the mourners. So it is a custom um, that when people come to come back to shul, oops, 
um, after when they're in their um, mourning period in, in Shiva. Um, and of course, we don't sit Shiva on Shabbat. That they wait until after Lachadodi to enter um, the congregation. It's a sign of being a mourner. And the congregation is supposed to um, sort of greet them with these words. So the words are listed here. So yes, I do know that it's in the Sidur of Sim Shalom, but here there's just much more of an explanation um, and it's given a, a little bit more prominence. Um, so that's just a nice um, minhag. And um, then there's also this explanation of um, what it means to comfort mourners. Um, so again, not something that is done all the time in conservative synagogues, um, but certainly a nice tradition to, um, to reinstate if, um, God forbid, there are mourners. We, we hope that not to have to use it often, but um, if there are, um, at least it's there. Um, so now, uh, this is the psalm for Shabbat. Okay, and let's see. Um, I also wanted to point out that when we see instructions in red, so in red, there are the transliterations, but also in the red print are these little instructions and very often um, in the Sidur, and I think it's interesting, um, the, they will give the instruction, some congregations recite Mourner's Kaddish. So in other words, um, and then others continue with the study. So what they're doing is allowing for um, as many congregations, many different types of communities as possible to make use of the Sidur and not feel like, oh, if we skip the Mourner's Kaddish now that we're doing something wrong or we're not following the, you know, what's supposed to be um, done. So really showing in many places that, um, that there are different minhagim, there are different customs and that synagogue's custom can be, you know, is acceptable and ours is acceptable, um, that there, there are um, choices. Um, when the case is that something is supposed to be done, um, it will express the, the um, editors um, use language that sort of lets you know that as well. Um, and then let's see if it follows here. There are, so here's the Mourner's Kaddish. Um, and one thing that I also wanted to point out here is that, um, you know, very often we're, um, you know, we're concerned if we don't have um, enough people for a minyan, not necessarily on a Friday night, but let's say in a, a weekday or um, before the pandemic, um, that what would happen if we can't say, if the mourner can't say the mourner's kaddish. So there's something that's included in um, this sidur, which um, I did not see in Sim Shalom or any previous sidur that we have used, um, which is a prayer in place of um, saying the mourner's Kaddish when a minyan is not present. So the Kaddish is given, you know, its prominence, like that that's the ideal, the, the preferred um, prayer to say. But if there is no minyan present, there's an option given here, and it's on this page. Um, you can see on, on the left side, um, and it's a very beautiful and could be a very meaningful um, reading um, so that in case of a lack of minyan, there is still something to say. So I think that that's beautiful that that's included as well. Then there are several pages of text study that was also in um, the Sidur Sim Shalom, um, perhaps not all of the same text study, but definitely included. Um, and even another Kaddish, the Kaddish Jarabanan. So scrolling through, so here's um, some more text study. And you know, again, hopefully we'll spend time, you know, as we start using the Sidur to actually look um, at, at all these texts, but we certainly don't have time um, in just our 
a class now, um, you know, perhaps we can look at, at one particular thing, but I just I want to show you and get through um, Kabbalah Shabbat and Mariv, at least tonight. So here's the Kaddish de Rabbanan. And here they show you, traditionally, Kaddish de Rabbanan has been recited by mourners and those observing your site, but it may be recited by anyone who has read or heard the teaching of a text based on Torah. So I think the language um, uh, of what they use, the editors use in um, sort of these little instructions um, is also very um, inclusive and, and helpful. Okay, then we get to the evening service um, to Marif. And um, I think we pointed out last time, there's this little symbol there, um, which signifies that that is a place to bow. So if you see um, this little symbol, it's here both in the English and the Hebrew, and it's uh, red, um, that shows you places to bow. Um, so that's the Baruchu. And then I want to show you at the end, this is the first bracha um, after the Baruchu preceding the Shema. So let's look. So the bracha is here um, in Hebrew, Baruch Ata Adonai HaMariv Aravim. And, and let's look at the translation. Um, it starts, you know, again, Baruch Ata Adonai, which is how um, actually that paragraph begins. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melacholam. Asher bidvaro mari varavi. Okay, so that, that is the paragraph. But look what they've done in the English here. Rather than translating Baruch Ata Adonai, every time that Baruch Ata Adonai appears in the Sidur, it is never translated in Sidur Lev Shalem. It is always written, just as in the Hebrew, it is written Baruch Ata Adonai. So I want to just read, again, you don't have this on the online version, but um, I, at the beginning in the, in the foreword, um, there actually is a little explanation of this. And I think it's important um, to understand why they did this and to look at it. So it says, um, this is written by one of the editors, the formula with which a bracha begins, Baruch Ata Adonai, has often uh, in the past been translated as blessed are you, or praised are you. We, meaning the editors, decided, however, not to translate these standard opening words, for we felt that neither blessed nor praised is an adequate translation of Baruch. For instance, some classic Jewish commentators offer that Baruch Ata should be understood to mean, you are the source of blessing. Equally, in the Bible, the phrase Baruch Ata can convey a simple greeting, like welcome in English. Thus, it may simply be an opening address to God. Finally, it is important to convey that these words in Jewish liturgy function primarily as the introduction of a bracha, and that a bracha is a formal part of liturgy, unlike other prayers composed in different times and recited at will. So this is a very big statement, you know, rather than translating it, um, to just leave it at it as is, but with the explanation in the beginning. So, you know, if somebody just comes in who is not familiar with the service at all, they might not understand just from looking at this, why that particular um, part of it is not translated. Um, but I hope that by reading that paragraph, now you do have a, a better understanding of, of why. Um, okay, now there's also several times where um, alternate versions are given, and this is the case with the um, Baruchu here. Um, so it's the same um, beginning, the, the same opening, um, but what the alternate blessing here, it says, this is from the Italian rite. So this is like one of the original um, Sidurim of the Saja Gaon, the 10th century. And there's an explanation here. Um, but I think that, um, again, the, the Sidur is trying to stretch us in two directions. It's trying to bring us back historically and tradition. And it's also trying to stretch in the other direction to make us um, more... Um, to, to bring us into to the modern and, and add contemporary to, to keep things relevant. So I really love that too about the Sidur, um, that we can have both 
um, the traditional and the uh, contemporary, um, and that we can include both in our davening and our worship. So I love the fact that they bring, you know, other pieces of much older um, Sidurim and from other um, diverse communities. Um, so we are just about out of time. Um, I want to, let me just stop sharing for a moment and go back to see all of you. Hi there. So um, that was our journey through, I, I, I think that, you know, I was trying to, um, hopefully you saw how much is um, really available to us um, through this CDOR by, by looking at different um, uh, specific parts of it. Um, and there's so much more. Um, so we will have, hopefully, God willing, years and years to look at this together. <laughs> hopefully, we'll be using this CDOR for many years to come. And as we um, sort of transition to it and use it, um, that we will uh, explore more of what it has to offer. Any uh, comments or any other, um, maybe bringing us back to um, that original quote um, about how um, when something is, is wrote or if we're just saying the same fixed prayers, um, that uh, it's not with sincerity. Um, so any, any reactions um, now that we've looked more at the text? Go ahead, unmute and just um, let's hear some more reactions. To the to the Sidor, not to me. You know. I I love the fact that um, you know as a uh, linguist by education um, that they you know take some of the words and and you know go to the the shorish, to the the root um, to say this is like when we were talking about um, litzur. I was thinking of Ma'ot Sur, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's there's that connection, Rock of A, you know, but we're you know talking about Sur as as God, um, and that you know, and you know, I try to do that when I'm teaching you know my kids that um, you know if you don't know the Hebrew, try to find the root because if you know the root, a lot of the prayers make more sense, and so I I love the fact that they do that and that you pointed out that they do that because I. I've, I've just been obsessing over where what pages the prayers are on and haven't gotten to any of the commentary yet. So I'm. Ah, okay. Um, thanks, Susan. You know, one of the things that I didn't point out, and I'm just um, trying to find where I had um, put it. Okay, somebody else wants to um, make a comment that there was one other piece of it that I wanted to show you. Anybody else want to? Um, any other reactions, comments? Um, well, I've made so many notes and now I can't, I have to just find the right place here. Um, hmm. All right, well, I'll bring it to you next time. Oh, well, Ellen, you wanted to say something? I just wondered, I am so excited having heard uh, the Cantor's two introductory speaking about this when are we going to get this new book when will it be introduced into our ah, okay so that is a great question um so first of all um the the book is um not cheap <laughs> i mean it's not you know it's not crazy but it's not inexpensive um and i think that um you know we wanted to be responsible in the way we acquired them um, that, you know, that wasn't necessarily in our budget to, you know, just replace all of the Cedarine now. So um, we're turning it into a, an opportunity for people to um, make contributions to help um, defray the cost of uh, acquiring all of these new Cedarine. So that we're going to start um, that way. Um, and then um, sort of transition, like we wanted to give people a chance to sort of get accustomed and um, from a little bit more familiar with the CDOR before um, completely uh, switching to it, um, which is how we did it with the, the previous CDOR. When we made the switch from Silverman to um, CDOR Sim Shalom, we phased it in. In other words, we continued to announce pages in both CDORIM. Um, and I think that um, 
Karen has uh, done a huge job of um, making a, a list of, of pages so that we can reference um, and easily have it accessible. Um, the pages in both um, the Sidor Sim Shalom and Sidor Lev Shalem, um, because there may be some people who may want to continue for a little while to use or for as long as they choose uh, to continue to, to daven and to pray from Sidor Sim Shalom. So the, the goal, but the goal is to have it um, that, that we, you know, sort of make the, the actual um, starting to officially use it um, for Shavuot. I think that's our goal. Well, Thank Alan, you should have received a mailing and it explains all of it. So take a good look at it and it I tells you, you know, we can buy them in, in memory of or in honor, or to honor something. Yes, right. you can make a dedication. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and then there's also the opportunity to purchase um, a copy for you to have at home. Yes, so I did see that. On that form. So you can you can do that as well. Um, and otherwise, it is available, as you can see, in PDF form um, on online. Um, but, you know, if you want to purchase the actual book and get that. And that's so cool that they have a little background on um, everybody, you know, all the poems and who wrote the poems. And that's, you know, all in, in the back of the actual yes. copy. So. All in the back. And it's gonna so be I learned a lot today. Excellent. So in well, my quest to, to help out the page to page, I've been actually doing it for a while, which took me a lot longer than I expected because every time I turn the page, I stop to read all the commentaries <laughs> and then go back to the Sim Shalom and go, oh, that wording's different. Oh, this wording's different. So I could have had it done very quickly, but it took me over weeks, weeks, weeks. Well, glad you were able to. And, I, and I, I have to say, I know I said it last week, I really like the Sidor. I find it for especially someone who is not a, a childhood Hebrew learner. Uh, my Hebrew learning started at 50. So for me, to see, as Susan said, the root of words and, and, and you know them because you say them, but you don't know why you say them. And to really have that better translation and ex explanation of why it's what it is, it's fascinating. It's, and yes, the, in, the indexes in the back are also very cool. Right. So all, all around exciting and, uh, you know, a lot to learn and, and hopefully um, this is just the beginning. This is just touching the surface. Um, we have one more session next week, but as I said, we're gonna be spending months and hopefully years um, getting to know uh, and interacting with the Sidor. Len. Oh, I know, I know have, Len I, wants I, I to have... say something else, Len, before I just wanna say, we're not meeting next week. We're meeting again in two weeks. Oh, right. Thanks, Rabbi Julia. Yeah, I've, I've used the, the left shalom a few times. I know that for the high holidays, my family absolutely loves the Machser version of it. Uh, they are converts. Uh, I've used it a couple of times in, in Shabbat services. We do have about a dozen copies or so. My only objection is that it is substantially heavier than the Sim Shalom, not as heavy as the Eitz Chaim. Uh, so if you're standing for a long time, particularly for a Chag, where there's also Hallel as well as an Amidah, it can get a little tiresome to hold. That's my only objection. So otherwise, you're it's right. a great it score. Is, it so is, Len, is, I have decided I have to change my seat back a row. So I have a pew in front of me to lean it on because <laughs> good plan. lots I was using it, my hand went numb. So yeah. After, <laughs> after 33 years of not changing my seat, no. <laughs> <laughs> good plan. Well, well, just like we have to, you know, work on our prayer muscles, we now have to work on our arm muscles as well. <laughs> Absolutely. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. Uh, yeah. Jim, did you want to add something? <laughs> One of the reasons why we did not go with that was the weight. Wow. It's, I mean, it's an excellent, and, and, and I was not on the committee who made the decision, but I saw the both books before, before we made the decision. Um, I can see that for us would be a tremendous resource, but it's, it's, there's no question, it's heavy. Um, and 
the print, I'm not sure if the print is even a little smaller in that one than in, in ours, that, that what we're using right now. And there's a lot of folks uh, in either larger print but without going to a massive book. So the, the weight had an impact in, in our right. decision. Well, the, the Hebrew is actually a little um, bigger than the Hebrew that's in Sim Shalom, just slightly bigger. But the um, the the commentary on the sides, yeah, it, um, right. is is small. You can still daven from an, any old siddur. The prayers are the same. Right. It's just that you don't have access to all the explanations. Which, as someone who's familiar with prayers for a while, I find fascinating and very enlightening, enlightening and really helpful. Even though I have a background of sorts. Yeah, I, it's I wonderful. Know, I, I find there are times in service, like Julie's comment at, at the beginning, know the prayers, it, it just by almost not exactly, it's sort of wrote, but it puts me in a much more spiritual place just to flow with it. When I get into the commentary, it's, moving, it's using a different part of one's brain and it feels different. So, and I know for me on the commentary, I go much slower and I need to sit, let me sit with that outside of, of services in um, some respects. Absolutely. My wife is different. My wife works differently than I do. But. Right, and we all do, which is why um, it's all there on the page and yep. it's up to each one of us to choose which way we want to access it at that particular time. As Susan, as Susan said at the beginning too, each of us, each time we come to, to pray together, we are different. Each one of us is in a different place. Um, and uh, different than we were the day before. Um, and so, you know, the way we're going to um, interact with the Sidur could be different from one service to the next. We, we, but this way it gives us at least um, the, the options are there to, to find our way for that particular time that we're having the experience. So thank you all. Um, we stayed a little bit, a few minutes over, but I really appreciate and um, enjoy having this opportunity to explore, to be on this journey together. And it's very exciting. Um, and in two weeks, we'll have another session together. So I hope you'll join then. Um, and if you have the opportunity to get a copy of the Sidor um, for yourself, you don't have to order on Amazon. You can do it through our, um, the, the synagogue office. Um, you know, since we're going to be using anyway, you may want to have you know your own copy because that's the other thing that I was going to say was, oh look at all these posts and like you know if I want to go back to something and you know if you're only using the sidor that's in the sanctuary it's not yours you can't put all your you know post-it notes to it. and you think oh I'll remember that well you did there's so much here like even as I said and I spent a lot of time with this there was something I wanted to show you I can't find the post-it note but I'll, I'll get it for for next time but. Um, so that's, it's just like, um, I think very helpful to try to um, obtain your, uh, to acquire your own copy. So um, if possible. Anyway, um, I wish you all a wonderful day. And thanks yeah. again for joining us. Yeah. We'll see everybody Thank you soon. very much, Cantor. Thanks, very everybody. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Karen. Karen. Yes. Are, yeah. are you still there? I'm here. <clears throat> um, do I call the office um, to make my well, arrangement? Joy.